Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today we are going to look at a variation of the Scandinavian which is much simpler than the ones we've been looking at before. We are going to deviate from the main line a bit. Uh, so far we've covered uh, the three main variations after knight to c3, the tempo on the queen. We've been through, let me just put the position on the board, so e4, d5, the Scandinavian, e d5, queen d5. We've been through knight uh, c3, and queen a5, queen d8, and queen d6, which are the three most common variations, the three most common lines in the Mises Kotrots variation of the Scandinavian. Today, we are going to be looking at a different move, at a completely different move, knight to f3. And I have to say, ever, si ever since I've started playing uh, chess, I've been playing e4, and I've been meeting the Scandinavian with knight to f3 almost exclusively, and only recently when I decided to pick up the Scandinavian myself uh, did I begin playing uh, knight to c3, the main lines. And you could argue that uh, knight c3 is a better move for white. Uh, it probably is, and it gives white more chances, uh, it gives white uh, a tempo gain, more space, and uh, it gives black less chances. Black basically after knight to c3 has to play a solid game, uh, and after knight to f3, black has a free hand to start an attack much sooner. However, white doesn't have the problems he usually has after knight to c3. Uh, if you haven't seen the introductory video on the Scandinavian, please do. I would also advise you to look at at least one variation after knight to c3, just to get uh, acquaint acquainted with the lines. I'm just going to briefly mention the main issues. So after knight to c3, let's say queen to a5, is played, d4. Uh, the main theme of the position is the black pawns on e6 and c6, the white pawn on d4, and the white knight on c3. The queen is obviously running around in every variation apart from queen d8, where it stays in one place, um, which I find preferable. Uh, but the thing is that white has a weakness on d4, black has a perfectly solid Karo Khan pawn structure with those two pawns, and the knight on c3 is a liability rather than a strength. Even though it's a developed piece and it gave white a temp you could argue whether the tempo was useful or not, because the knight is blocking the c pawn from advancing either to c3, solidifying the main weakness, the d4 pawn, or to c4, advancing farther in the center and gaining space. All of that uh, can't happen after knight to f3. With knight to f3 you're basically avoiding uh, all the main lines. Black can transpose, but to his own uh, demise, because if there is no knight on c3, as we are going to see, the position in the normal Scandinavian is much better for white. And trust me, more often than not, I will enter a normal, normal Scandinavian position without my knight on c3, which is perfect. Uh, okay. So now the main thing uh, about this variation is that you're not attacking the queen. So players with the black pieces who aren't familiar with the variation often just don't know what to do with the queen. It's, it doesn't seem natural to leave the queen on d5. It definitely seems awkward. And you have made uh, a very strong developing move uh, in the time being. So uh, there is one way for, for black to equalize the position, try to equalize. If white plays perfectly, then uh, white is going to end up a pawn down in a much better attacking position. However, if black doesn't know uh, the, the variation, then white is simply going to have an advantage. Uh, what's the setup for black? Uh, since the Scandinavian player, or at least as far as I can tell, I don't have that much experience in the Sc Scandinavian, but... I like it for black because I play the Karo Khan. The Scandinavian player wants a solid game uh, in which Tempi uh, won't matter that much because the position is sort of maneuvering and white will have a hard time breaking through uh, black's position with the pawns on e6 and c6. In the knight f3 lines, uh, Tempi do matter and they matter tremendously and black has to play, play extremely accurately. Here on move 3, black has three main choices. I'm going to go through all three. Uh, the first one uh, is a sideline, and I'm actually going to use a game to show you uh, that move. We are going to look at uh, Anish Giri versus Vladimir Kramnik from 2014, where Vladimir Kramnik decided to play c6. Now, c6 is, in my opinion, a mistake, because c6 is the first move to enter the normal Scandinavian setup bishop f5 or bishop g4 and closing down with e6 playing bishop e7 knight d7 and closing down the structure and it doesn't really make much sense here 
Uh, after c6, uh, the normal continuation is d4. And notice that the knight isn't on c3, so white is free to play either c3 or c4 at his own leisure. Knight f6, continuing the normal development, bishop to e2, in anticipation of bishop g4, and now h3, chasing the bishop away. And as always in the Scandinavian, black uh, can give up the light squared bishop because he's going to play e6 anyway, and the bishop won't be the best piece on the board, so bishop f3, bishop f3, queen a5 check. Uh, because the queen is awkward on d5, black uses the chance to play queen a5, and now of course white isn't going to be playing knight c3, that would be a redundant move, just making your piece worse. So white plays c3, solidifying his main weakness, and after e6, bishop f4, you have a position in which white has the bishop pair, the main Scandinavian weakness for white, the pawn on d4 is uh, solid, it's secure, and black doesn't really have anything. Black, black and okay. Uh, Kramnik prevented castling for a moment, queen to a6, but after queen b3, knight bd7, knight to d2, I just love white's position. The bishop pair and uh, no problems at all. The variation normally after c6 goes d4, knight f6, bishop e2, bishop g4, and white castles immediately. And now black can have better plans, but usually black does play e6 and white will continue with c4. And after queen d8, knight c3 then. So this is the main line of the c6 variation. And once again, you can see that your c3 knight is developed only after you have moved your c4 pawn. And the position is once again playable for white. Much more playable than it is for black. Queen b3 is an idea. Bishop e3, uh, queen to c2, rook to d1, rook to e1. Developing all of your pieces normally. And black is sort of stuck having to develop his, uh, his b knight to d7, his bishop to e7 and castle, even though this pawn isn't on c2, it's on c4. So that's a huge improvement for white. That is why uh, after knight to f3, I would definitely recommend that you don't play c6. And Vladimir Kramnik played it, so it's obviously playable and it's the third most common move. It's not that you lose the position immediately, but it just doesn't make sense. Uh, please give me your opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, that's my subjective opinion. And I would just like to mention that <clears throat> I have about seven books on the Scandinavian. I couldn't really find much information on the knight f3 line. It's same as with 3d4 for white, which is worse than knight f3. Uh, Grandmasters dismiss it as a weird sideline, which is as if white was saying I'm afraid of the main lines and I'm going to play an inferior move. I really don't think that knight f3 is an inferior move and I would like strong players to give it uh, some more emphasis in their, in their books and uh, in their writing. So I think knight f3 is a, is a great opening and, and yeah, I'm sorry that uh, more hasn't been written about it. Okay, uh, the second move we are going to look at is the move knight to f6, which is a perfectly uh, normal developing move, but once again, in my opinion, an inferior move because of what we are about to see in the main line. Uh, after knight f6, white should continue with d4, as always, bishop g4 pinning the knight, bishop e2, knight to c6, and now h3 once again chasing the bishop away, and uh, the pawn isn't loose, as we are going to see, bishop f3, bishop takes f3, uh, the queen is attacked, if the queen takes, okay, let me just show you that, if, if queen takes on d4, then bishop takes c6 is winning the queen, because it's with check, so after bishop takes f3, the main move is queen to d7, white plays c3, black castles, the difference in this variation is that black lost the tempo playing knight to f6. And of course, knight f6 is a normal developing move. It makes a lot of sense, but it actually wastes time uh, in black's uh, plan. And this is why bishop g4, which is the main line, is more accurate, as we are going to see. After castles, white should simply continue with queen to b3, uh, e6, opening up the bishop, castles, and this is the setup you're going to play. In the knight f3 uh, Scandinavian, if, uh, if black plays correctly, then he's going to castle queenside. If black castles kingside, then you know that, that you have a good position. That's, the, the variation is fairly simple to grasp, and whenever I've played it, uh, I felt really comfortable with, where, when black would castle uh, kingside. You do have a problem if you have a pawn on d4 and the pawns are on c6 and d6, because your pawn can still be a liability. But the great thing is that you can choose whether you want to develop your c pawn to c3 or to c4. And c4 obviously helps with d5, which you don't normally get. 
So if you have your knight on c3, your pawn on c4, d5 is reinforced. Very often you're going to have a bishop on f3 as well. And if black has castled short, then black doesn't really have that many attacking chances. Castling long is a different story, but as I said, knight f6 is a slight inaccuracy in my opinion. This position is easier to play for white because he has the bishop pair, he has more space in the center, he's already probing the queen side with the queen, uh, and let's say a4, a5, a6 could be a, a major threat. If the queen moves, then bishop takes c6 is a threat. Uh, white now has to develop a good plan, which I've played once, is knight d2, knight c4, knight e5. Uh, you want to exchange this defender, obviously, you want to dislodge the f6 knight, you want to get rid of your d4 weakness, and transferring it to e5 is okay. So knight f6 once again uh, a move which I wouldn't recommend and I believe there's only one way to punish white for playing knight to f3 because obviously deviating from the from the main lines uh, on move 3 not playing knight c3 is a mistake but it's not such a big mistake. Let's see how black can try to punish it. The main move if you consider black's plans and we've just been looking at knight f6 which is a tempo loss in my opinion because black wants to castle queenside as soon as possible the main move is bishop g4 this move basically forces bishop e2 this is the only move and now black should continue with knight c6 castle slung after knight c6 d4 castle slung black has an extremely active position and uh, castling is much more useful than having a knight on on f6 because now already uh, the d4 pawn is under pressure and as we are going to see in the variation white is most often going to lose it for the initiative one mistake i would like to mention in this position after bishop e2 which i face a lot and which i'm extremely happy to see on the board is the move c6 after c6 black once again once again goes for the same setups in, as in the normal scandinavian but white doesn't have to play knight c3 before he plays c4 so it's an improvement for white d4 e6 castles knight f6 c4 attacking the queen the queen can go to a5 but it doesn't really make much sense so queen d8 knight c3 now and these these are the positions i was talking about after bishop e7 h3 bishop h5 bishop e3 castles the positions in which black has castled king side even though your d4 pawn is still a liability are going to be much easier to play for white because uh, a uh, you, you don't have a backward pawn on c2, not a backward pawn, but a bad pawn on c2, your knight isn't blocking anything. All of your pieces are developed uh, and you're one tempo up in development and you have basically everything in the position and black doesn't have that much counterplay. If I turn on the engine, uh, the position is plus one and a half, which is, I wouldn't say true, uh, plus two now. This should be winning for white. It is much better, but overextending with a move such as g4 is always risky. There are plenty of other attacking plans. But if black goes for the c6 normal setups, then he's definitely going to be worse. As I said, this uh, pawn not being on c2 is the improvement that makes all the difference. So let's see what black should do. After bishop to e2, c6 doesn't make sense, e6 doesn't make sense. Black should play actively. Knight c6. Uh, here... <clears throat> I would just like to mention one sideline. D4 is the main move, but as you can see what's going to happen, black is going to castle queenside and put pressure on D4. You might wonder why not develop the pawn to D3. Uh, it sort of does make sense, but it lets black equalize comfortably. So let's say you castle here. Uh, I've played this, but then I stopped playing that. Castles, castles long, and now D3. D3 is safer, okay. Uh, e5 isn't such a strong threat because e5 is usually the move that black wants to play in these lines and e5 doesn't put pressure on, on d4 and uh, yeah black doesn't have a counterattack that quickly but white doesn't have space and white ha doesn't have that much activity either the engine will tell you that it's completely equal and i i really don't like this variation for white so let's say e5 which is the most active move now if you play c4, d3 is weak and backward. Uh, if you play knight c3, then... I mean, I, I guess knight c3 is the best move here, controlling the, the e4 square. You are going to want to chase the bishop away, but it's just not as active, and I would recommend that you don't play. Don't be afraid of black. You are white here. You, you have to attack yourself. So after knight c6, let's look at the proper knight f3 Scandinavian. d4, castles. And now uh, you have a choice between two moves. You can either play c4 or bishop e3. 
uh, c4 is more active and uh, more aggressive and riskier we're going to look at that later let's look at bishop e3 so bishop e3 black's only move in this position to try to uh, equalize is e5 c4 now chasing the queen away queen a5 check bishop d2 bishop b4 d5 this is what you want to achieve now if any e4 happens you can simply move the knight uh, you have relieved the pressure of this diagonal and you are looking forward to knight c3 you are advancing your pawn majority and if you've seen my last video this would be an example of an end game uh, if you manage not to mess up something tactically in the middle game and in this opening this would be an example of an end game which is very good for white you have a four to three pawn majority on the queen side uh, even though the king is castled long the pawn majority is already advanced so it makes your end game superior to to blacks now here you might be surprised but the black best, uh, best move for black is bishop takes f3 bishop takes f3 knight to d4 attacking the bishop knight c3 giving away the bishop pair if black wants to take it uh, queen to a6 is the main move putting pressure on the c4 pawn bishop e2 knight f6 uh, what can you say about this position it's definitely messy the engines give it as much better for white once again i would disagree uh, i think it's slightly better for white because of the end game potential but black is very active all of black species are in the game black is ahead in development which is very rare in the scandinavian and black has a fine game what i like about knight of three scandinavians is that you are going to have a fighting aggressive game for both sides it's never going to be boring and a draw is highly unlikely okay so this would be the bishop e3 line it's sort of messy uh, but let's look at the main line after castle slong c4 attacking the queen is the main move and now the queen doesn't go to a5 because uh, simply knight c3 uh, the main move is queen to f5 putting pressure on the f3 knight and putting pressure on d4 so it's sort of hard to defend but you have bishop e3 and now once again bishop takes f3 bishop takes f3 and here black can tactically uh, win a pawn obviously black doesn't want to allow bishop takes c6 so the move here using the fact that the king is still in the center and this is something you have to learn so i'm going to going to, going to go back from the top so e4 d5 e d5 queen d5 knight f3 bishop g4 the most active move trying to castle queenside as soon as possible bishop e2 the only move knight c6 the best move d4 taking up space don't castle and go for d3 castles long c4 continuing active play and now after queen f5 bishop e3 uh, black can take the pawn anyway even though it's defended three times so the, the variation is complicated and it goes like this bishop takes f3 bishop takes f3 and now knight takes d4 bishop takes d4 and black has queen e6 check so you are forced to play bishop e2 and now after queen e4 you're going to lose your bishop there's no way to defend so castles giving up the bishop queen takes d4 now you can trade or not you're a pawn down so i would recommend that you don't trade pieces and here you can see in in the main lines of the knight f3 uh, scandinavian that black has a pawn but black is actually worse the main move here is queen a4 and now if you turn on the engine uh this is equal slightly better for white nothing major going in the position but i would always rather have white here because of the initiative and because of king safety and because of development notice that black cannot take on b2 because uh, a7 falls and white would be virtually winning the best move here <coughs> i'm sorry is e6 knight c3 developing the last minor piece bishop d6 developing the bishop and now uh, there's this strange continuation uh, after knight c3 bishop d6 is the main move one other move i was looking at is bishop e7 to bishop f6 getting at this diagonal but apparently giving up giving up the bishop is the correct choice here because the knight is very strong in the attack so after bishop d6 you can attack the queen and the bishop with knight b5 black knows play plays queen e5 uh, forcing a trade so knight takes d6 c takes d6 this might seem a bit strange but it's, it's the best way for black to play the most active way for black for black to play if you don't take with the c phone you can also take uh with the queen uh, you can't really take with the rook because if rook takes queen check taking uh, the f7 pawn so either with the queen or with the pawn but after queen takes uh, white gets another tempo and white can also take on a7 so 
not really that good. You can take here and that's it. So after knight takes d6, c takes d6 is the main move. And this is slightly better for white, plus 0.7, plus 0.8. And this is the, the variation that I've been studying for a long time, but I never got to enter it, uh, funnily enough, because my opponents always deviate and almost always go for the normal Scandinavian setups. But here you can see the, that the black king is far less safe than the white king. Uh, white has a much better minor piece, white has uh, a better developed rook, uh, because the rook on f1 and the rook on a1 are better than the h8 rook, and the game continues normally with bishop f3, putting pressure on the b7 pawn. Once again, queen b2 is met by queen a7, winning, king b8 finally defending the a7 pawn, and now uh, you want to give up the b2 pawn because the king is stuck here and that would win the game, so rook f to e1, once again queen b2 uh, loses to rook b1, taking here. Uh, black now continues with queen c5, b4. You want black to take on c4 as well. Uh, queen c4 is actually a forced win for white, uh, as I'm going to show you. And this is something that I'm proud to say one of the rare variations which I analyzed by myself and uh, I didn't want to use the engine. I tried to figure out why queen c4 is, uh, is a bad move. So, okay, uh, just let me briefly tell you that queen c7 is the main move and here is where I would like to stop. I think that this is uh, well enough into the middle game that you can see the main features of the position. A better minor piece, a better attack, uh, there's moves like queen b3, a4, a5, a6. You are much quicker to open up a black's position than black is to opening up anything on the king side. And you are a pawn down, but in my opinion, you have more than uh, enough compensation for the pawn. The engine tells you that it's almost plus one. So much better uh, much better for white now let's look at what happens after queen takes c4 after queen takes c4 uh, there is a strange move uh, which uh, which is very good for uh, for white and it's in fact uh, a double piece sacrifice so let's look at what happened so bishop takes b7 <clears throat> if black doesn't take then white is winning this is plus three because once the bishop retreats, or it doesn't retreat, the rooks are coming to c1 and uh, into the position. Okay, But the critical move is king takes b7. After king takes b7, there's a funny variation, uh, rook a to c1. After queen d5, which is the best move, rook c7 check. If black doesn't take, he's losing by force. If he takes, he's losing uh, the queen. So, okay, uh, king takes c7, queen takes a7 check. Queen b7 is the only move, and now rook to c1, winning the queen, king d7, rook takes b7. A completely winning position, not only because white is up in material, but because the knight on b8, on, on g8, and the rook on h8 are out of the game, and white has two tremendously strong uh, passed pawns. So let's uh, go over the opening once again. I want to make sure that I covered all of this in detail. So after bishop g4, bishop e2. Knight c6, d4, castles, c4, don't be afraid to open up the position and give up a pawn. Queen f5, bishop e3, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes, getting a pawn, bishop takes d4, queen e6, check bishop e2. Queen e4, winning the bishop back, the best move is to castle. Queen takes d4, black would love a queen trade, because he's up a pawn in, the very, in a very clean position if the queens get traded off and the rooks. So queen a4, probing a7 e6, knight c3, bishop d6. Uh, once again, if you want to stop the main line from happening, bishop e7, uh, bishop f6 is the uh, second choice you could go for. Knight b5, <coughs> getting the bishop. Queen e5, knight takes. c takes. Remember that if queen takes a7 drops, if rook takes uh, f7 drops. So after c takes d6, bishop f3, putting pressure on b7. King b8, rook f1 attacking the queen. Queen c5, and now b4, the main move. This is move 18, and unfortunately, you have to know the variation until move 18, and you have to know what happens if queen takes. So, okay, this was the critical line, uh, and this is basically the best thing black can do. So, once again, a plus one position for white, in which white is giving up a pawn for a huge attack, and I'm not sure why this variation isn't more popular. I really like it and I think it's a good sideline to have against the Scandinavian. 
Uh, once again, I've started playing Knight C3 main lines, but Knight F3 is still in my repertoire, and I think it's a great opening. The main problem is that Black basically don't know, doesn't know what to do, so you you are not go, going to enter this position that often. But remember the main plans, and if you play the Scandinavian, remember that after Knight F3, your goal is to castle Queenside as soon as possible, put pressure on D4 with the move E5 if White allows it, and uh, sometimes win the D4 pawn. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you liked the variation. Let me know what you think. Uh, once again, thank you for the support and for the comments. And stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.